is Scratch. A block-based programming language that needs no introduction. Okay, I'll just shut up. Because today I will be remaking it but in Roblox and also 3D. Firstly, I want to recreate the Roblox Studio camera. And to do this, I did this life hack called plagiarism. I mean, to be fair, I edit up and down motion by myself and doing that included copy and pasting code and copy and pasting code. But now it's time to do something serious. Building. To start, I made this building menu which looks interesting and the icons, well, we don't talk about the icons around here. I also made the camera slow down while holding shift because I kept pressing shift in game but it didn't do anything but when I stopped it, it suddenly did and it was way too confusing. But I also need a way to move the parts because to my knowledge you gotta move stuff when you're building. So firstly I made this selecting system and thankfully there's this thing of the mouse called target which made implementing it very easy. I knew watching Bytebox wasn't a complete waste of time because at the end of the day I did learn one obscure thing about the mouse that I will never use again. After that I made this arrow that will help me move the parts. <coughs> I'm sorry, sprites. I also made this increment menu, just like in Roblox. And making the sprites move was actually pretty easy. I mean, having to spam click the arrow just to move stuff isn't that ideal, but I'm making Walmart scratch, not high quality scratch. After that, I did the same thing with the rotation, except it was a bit more complicated. But once I found out about med.deck, it became a lot easier. And to finish it off, I added these two buttons that switch between moving and rotating. But this is still very basic, so I added a panel that lets me change stuff like the name of the object, the color, the material and the size. And with all of this, I was able to create Bob, who looks pretty cool in my opinion. But how do I delete stuff, you may ask? Well, you can't. So I added a delete button. It wasn't difficult to make or anything, I just kinda forgot to do it until now. But now it's time to get into the thing that Scratch is mostly known for. Coding. Or the lack of it, I guess. Because instead of writing boring code, Scratch has Lego that turns into code. So I got started by making this script looking UI. After that I made the player be able to add rows and I know it looks like it just adds the new rows to the back but it actually adds them behind the row that the player clicked. Honestly I don't know why I made it like this because it was approximately 56 times harder than doing it the other way. But let's slow down a little bit. What am I trying to make exactly? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm making a hybrid between the Lego code that Scratch uses and regular code. And the way it's gonna work is the player will be able to add rows and in those rows they will be able to add Legos. Now that I think about it, it's literally just Lego code but a lot worse. I also call it the thread editor because I think it sounds professional. After that I went ahead and added a row remove button and it was time to get started on the Legos. The first thing I'll be remaking is the move block. So I made a blue block that has a target and a move direction and a mount. And even though it looks pretty cool in my humble opinion, it does nothing yet. So it's time for the hard part, making it do something. My plan for this is actually pretty simple because I'm just gonna create a folder for each thread and update the contents of it. And to my surprise it seemed to be a pretty good idea. After that I quickly made it sync with the contents of the visible version of the thread and it was done. After that I added an option to add new threads and made them load with this function. See what I did there? I just exposed you to the words like and sub and now you're more likely to subscribe. But in all seriousness please subscribe if you like the content. But how do I know for sure that everything works? I don't. So it's time to make playtesting. Firstly I added a fake camera that can be moved around by pressing the camera button. After that I made the threads work by going from the first line to the last line and running the corresponding action of the thread point from the action library. And the only reason I told you all of this is that I think the name action library sounds really cool. But there's still one problem. Let's see if you can spot it. That's right, the objects kinda just stay in place after the game is stopped, so I quickly made them reset. Now, I don't have a cool name, like action library, in the resetting script, so I won't tell you how I did it. But with that, I was pretty much done, so all that's left is more Lego. So I'm just gonna quickly go over them. 
Firstly, I added rotating, which rotates stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. After that, I added a direct move, which is pretty much the same as the normal move, but with a plus removed. Which means it won't make objects fly off the screen when run every frame. And I also did it for rotation. Lastly, I added a move forward thing, which does exactly what the name suggests. Move stuff forward. And with that, the blue category was done. Now from the purple category, I can't really recreate too much because it's mostly just displaying text, but I did recreate recoloring and resizing. After that comes the pink category, which is just about sounds, and since my version is completely silent, I can skip it. After that comes the yellow category, which my game already has, except for the key press one. So I just added a thread that only runs when a certain button is pressed, and also one that runs when a certain object collides with another. And with those edits I was able to make this Sisyphus type thing where the player is trying to get the coin but always gets reset before picking it up. The orange category from what I can tell is a bit all over the place but it doesn't matter because I'll only be adding the if statement. And this is the design I came up with. Yeah, it looks f***ing unusable so I scrapped it and this is how it looks now. But the problem is it can't do too much alone so it's time for the cyan category. I don't think most of these apply to my version so I'll only be recreating the key press one. So I added it. It works by adding a value inside of the check tab which is another value and setting that value to whatever is in the text box. I also added some scores because apparently scratch has those along with a set score and an increase score block. And with that my scratch make was pretty much finished. But can it hold up to the big game engines like Unity and Fortnite Creative? Well, I can only find out by making a game in it. Okay, it's time to make a game. I was gonna remake Flappy Bird at first because that's what people usually remake in game engines. But I don't think that it is physically possible to make it in this. So. I will remake the wave from Geometry Dash instead, because I think that's a lot easier. So as you can see, this is the player, I'll just make it green, because that's what the player color is. I've already made this game, like 10 minutes ago, well, almost made it, but then I, it, something was, something got messed up, I guess in the background, and I just couldn't finish it because the one sprite touch thing just wasn't happening and I was getting a lot of errors in the dev console so that's that's not fun but yeah we're we are back okay and there we go there's a background so now I just make a bunch of these clouds I guess because I like clouds also flappy bird has them I think okay so this is how it's looking so far I I mean it's definitely something I will also need a ground so the player cannot fall through the map I'll just make it green and maybe grass that's completely fine and now I just need one for the top I guess I'll make it blue and maybe neon yeah that's that's pretty cool maybe force field uh, okay it's all right it's all right so now I wanna move the player and the way the wave works is when you hold down the button it goes straight up and when you don't it goes straight down so I will I will just do this that on every frame I will check if the space key is down and if it is I will move the player I think I did this previously and I will also rotate it to about 45 and the exact opposite when they are not holding minus 45 and as you can see we yeah this is basically how the wave is in geometry dash now I just gotta make it collide with the ground so this will be the ground one. okay I just 
knocked over my mic and this will be ground two. I'm really hoping that this works so when the ground is touched I will just move the player to about y18 and the same with ground two. So now yay okay so it resets the player when we so it resets us when we touch the ground which is exactly what we want. Honestly. So what I wanna do next is I wanna add some coins. So this will be a coin, I name it coin one, and this will be constantly going to the left and we will have to pick it up because if we don't pick it up it will <laughs> it will not increase our score. I'll just make two more and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and we have four coins. I also have to add a reset point for the coins. So now I gotta add a touch even for every coin and I will just move them back. And this should make it so the, oh, never mind they don't travel. So I will go back here and just move all of them maybe by this much and there we go they move kind of back yes okay nice they're kind of fast but yeah it, it works I also want to move them back by quite a lot more and now uh, okay yeah it's, it's pretty cool so now we can pick them up and yeah that's that's basically it so i also wanna reset the coins when the grounds are touched so i just real quickly do that and they oh yes they moved back and now if i die yep and if i die continuously they should come out at the same time yes and yeah, that's pretty cool so the last thing that I want to do is a score so I just add like a coins score and I will add a touch for the player yeah I think that's because the coins touch first and it doesn't leave time it doesn't leave enough time for the other things to run yeah but honestly i can let that slide so yeah that's that's pretty much the game i can collect coins and i just died but yeah i can collect coins and they collect themselves if you don't collect them which is interesting. Now with the game made, does it hold up to the big engines? No.